All right, Jared, welcome and um, thank you for taking the time to join us. You recently came down to South Africa. Can you give us a little bit of information on how you traveled, um, especially during this COVID situation we have at the moment? Well, I traveled a couple of times over to South Africa, um, and actually Africa period. Uh, one, we took Ethiopian Air, and the other one was Qatar. Um, both times were very easy to get over. We did a double test just to make sure we had everything in order. So we took a test 72 hours upon departure and 72 um, upon arrival. Um, we did not need the arrival one. So, but uh, for me, I would always recommend my clients have both of them just in case. Um, you just never know which country is going to require it at any given time. Um, most of the European countries are requiring um, 72 hours upon arrival which meaning you wouldn't even have it before you left the States. So you'd, you would be required to take two. Um, and it has to be the PCR test. You cannot take the rapid test. Rapid tests are generally taken at our Walgreens here in the United States, um, but they do do PCR tests there as well, but just make sure it's PCR. Um, we did a screenshot. Um, I do know in Seattle, they're starting to give you a bit of a hassle they actually want to see the link and a paper document. So be, just be careful of where you're coming out of um, and please reach out to us and, and ask us any questions. But uh, so we flew to uh, Chicago and no hassles there. Um, we just showed a screenshot on our phones and um, we're able to fly over to a direct flight to Doha and then Doha to Johannesburg. Um, and we had to show our PCR test in Johannesburg as well. Um, again, they were wanting to actually see a paper copy, but uh, a screenshot was a su did suffice them. Um, once you guys picked us up from the airport, um, th that it was basically back to normal. So we drove out to your place, um, had an incredible time, had a great buffalo hunt, a um, couple of planes game with you. And then uh, when it was time for uh, to come back, uh, explain to me what you have set up at your place. All right, Jared, so what we do on our side, once you have arrived, and prior to your departure again, let's say you're on a seven or a 10 day safari, run about 72 hours before you leave. We have an arrangement with our local medical clinic in town with our um, house doctor that they will help us getting the whole group tested. Um, everything is arranged beforehand. Uh, so from camp, we can quickly go into town. It's about a 30, 35 minutes drive into town to the medical center. Uh, they will be waiting for us. We can quickly run everybody through with the tests and they will print us a hard copy and also send us an online copy. Within 24 hours, um, they say up to 48, but in general, it takes about 24 hours to get back. So within 48 hours before your departure, you will have the results back in a form of hard copy and also on your phone. Well, you make it really easy. So I, when I went back, I tried to make it difficult. So I wanted to see it as a consumer side or somebody that didn't have an outfitter that had it set up like you did. So I went to Johannesburg with no test. I flew in about nine o'clock in the morning and my next flight was at 6 p.m. Um, I do have connections in Johannesburg that um, he was able to get me a test uh, within about three hours. Um, not to say that everybody's going to get that, but the test is available for most people in Johannesburg. They do tell you 48 hours, just like you were saying, Eugene, um, but, but I did get mine in three hours. That all depends on how many people are getting tested that day, but they can actually have it within 12 hours for you. So that is a last minute option, but I would not count on it. So count on your outfitter providing the test, taking you like Eugene and PJ Safaris is doing, taking you to, uh, to in town for 30 minutes and uh, getting that test done. It's that easy. Um, then once I flew from Johannesburg over to Doha, Doha to the United States, I never ever got required to show the COVID test. However, in Johannesburg, they did upload it online and every time they scan my ticket, my PCR test would pop up saying that I was tested negative. So yeah, I think Jared, overall that um, the public can see that it's really not that difficult to travel. I think um, flight options are just limited at the moment. 
but getting onto a flight, getting to South Africa, enjoy a safari like everybody did in the past, is still a is still an option, and it's a reality. We can still do it. It just takes a bit of extra planning, but we have all we have all of that covered at the moment. So there's no reason why you should not take the opportunity and come down and enjoy your safari. Absolutely, Qatar Airlines is is number one. Um, they are incredible to fly with. They are very friendly. Um, Ethiopian as as well, and I've also heard uh, France France Air and uh, uh, Emirates had opened up, I believe, on the fifteenth of March. So yes, it is very easy to fly over. Yeah, the possibilities are getting more. And I think if clients just keep on um, asking us, we can check that for them as well, checking on flight options and just sending them information back as soon as things come through. But yeah, at the moment, there's various flights. You've mentioned them that will all um, bring you into Johannesburg. That's where we will meet you, drive you up to the hunting area, and there you can just enjoy a safari like it's been five, six, seven years ago. Yes. And what a safari it was, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well, thanks, Eugene. I appreciate it. It's a big pleasure, Jared.